Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dovey and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my new videos. And it's been a hot minute since I've recorded a video, but today I'm going to be sharing with you what I did for my teen twins 17th birthday party. We went with like a neutral greenery theme and I love how everything turned out. So I'll show you some treats that I made and of course the decoration. And if you'd like to see that, then continue watching. First up, I'm going to be showing you how I made these candied pretzel rods and they are so easy to make. You've probably already seen them, but let's get at it. I'm going to start with melting down some white candy melts and I am using the instructions on the package. And I'm going to take my pretzel rod and just use a spoon and spoon over that melted candy melt on top of it and just I'm going halfway on halfway down the pretzel rod and just making sure that I cover the entire area there and I tap it on the bowl just to get off the excess candy melt. And now I'm going to add some gold sprinkles to my pretzel rods and I'm doing it in small batches so my candy melt doesn't harden before I can get my sprinkles on it. And here I am sprinkling some green melted candy melt onto my pretzel rods. I just took some white uh, candy melt and melted that down and added some blue and yellow food coloring until I got the green color that I wanted. And I'm just using a frosting bag with a, num a number one tip. That way they can be thin lines on the pretzel rods. Next up, I'm going to show you the Rice Krispie treats that I made. And these are very easy. I'll leave the recipe down below. But it just takes six tablespoons of butter, a bag of 16 ounce marshmallows, and seven cups of Rice Krispie treats. I just started off with melting my butter and then once the butter is melted I will add my marshmallows and get those melted down as well. And once my marshmallows are almost melted, I'm going to take it off the burner and continue to stir and go ahead and add my Rice Krispie treats and stir that all together. Next, I'm going to butter my pan. I believe this is a 9x10 or a 9x12. And I'm going to go ahead and add that Rice Krispie mixture into the pan. And I'm going to use some wax paper to actually... Um, pat it down and smooth it out. That way it doesn't actually stick to my hands. Now that I have it all nice and neat in the pan, I'm just gonna set that aside and let it uh, just rest for a bit. And then I will dump it out onto my parchment paper here or wax paper and go ahead and cut it into my squares.
Now that I have it cut out, it is time to decorate it. And I took some uh, white melted candy melt and I'm just using a spoon to go ahead and drizzle that on top of my Rice Krispie treats. If you can see at the upper right, um, sorry, upper left corner, I was just going to dip them in the Rice Krispies, but I decided that that was gonna take too long. So I went ahead and just drizzled them. And now I'm gonna take my gold sprinkles and add that on top of my candy melt before it gets hard. And now I'm going to add some of that green candy melt that I had put onto the pretzel rods. So I am now just sprinkling that onto my Rice Krispie treats. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more of the white on there and add a little bit of more gold sprinkles. Next up, I am making these adorable sugar cookies. I love how these turned out. I will leave a link down below for the sugar cookie recipe and the royal frosting recipe. And I'm gonna start off by using a piping bag with my royal icing in it and a number two tip and just go ahead and outline my cookies. I will leave a link in the description box down below for my the cookie cutters that I used, the circle cookie cutter and this hexagon shape. After I outlined all of my cookies, I took um, some medium consistency, I can't even say that word, uh, royal frosting and flooded the middle of my cookie. And here I'm just using a toothpick to spread it out, get all the air bubbles out and make it nice and neat. I'm going to be using Wilton's gel food colorings to decorate my cookies. And you can see I have all uh, types of different colors on my plate here. I'm using leaf green, royal blue, lemon yellow, a little black and white. And I'm using a paintbrush that is dedicated to only food. And also I have some vodka in this little glass bowl. You can use um, almond extract if you want, lemon extract, vanilla extract, um, but the vodka will evaporate and your guests aren't going to get drunk. And they're not gonna taste the vodka either. And now I'm just gonna paint my leaves on my cookies. You can actually practice on a cookie that doesn't look that great just to kind of get the hang of it where you can practice with markers on paper, but it's very simple. You just draw some lines and some little leaves and it will look fantastic. You can make different greenery on each cookie, which is what I ended up doing. I made some similar um, but you don't have to make them all the same. You can mix your greens and use different color greens on each of your cookies, um, which is what I did. Um, just have fun and be creative about it and just know that it's going to look fantastic in the end. So have fun with it. And after all that, I don't think I told you what to do with the, vo the vodka. So what you're going to do is you would take a little bit of the vodka and mix it with your food coloring of choice and then brush it on your cookie and when you brush it on your cookie using the vodka it's going to dry and your food coloring is going to dry on your cookie as well if you were just to use the food coloring then it will take a while for that food coloring to dry I decided I wanted to pipe some K's on my cookies. And this is a number one or number two tip. I don't remember now, but you can use either one. And just go slow with it. I 
I also added some borders around some of my cookies, not all, but I really like how it looks on some of them that have the uh, greenery that was along the side, like in this cookie. And now I'm just taking my toothpick to uh, make sure that line is nice and neat and even it out and take out any of the air bubbles or the bumps in it. And since my kids are turning 17, I went ahead and made some cookies that had the number 17 on them as well. So now I'm going to paint uh, the embellishments that I put on the cookies uh, gold. And I'm going to be using some vodka and the Rolcom Super Gold Edible Food Colorant, which is a powder. It's a gold powder. Um, and I will mix that into a bowl, a little bit in a bowl here, and add some vodka and just kind of make a, not really so much as a paste, but a consistency that you can paint with. And you don't want it clumpy, so I'm making sure that I'm going to mix it all together nice and smooth. And then just take a paintbrush that I have dedicated to my food only and paint the K, the 17, and then the borders on my cookies. I will leave a link down below for this gold uh, colorant if you're interested in getting that. Next up is this simple naked cake. The greenery I got from Hobby Lobby and I just put it around the base of the cake. And the cake board, I took a plain cake board and I took some 1 8 of an inch of gold ribbon and I glued it around the entire perimeter of the cake board. And now I'm going to move on to frosting my cake. I am using a bit of masking tape and I'm going to put it on the bottom of the cake board. That way it will stay in place as I am frosting the cake. Now I'm going to take a little bit of frosting and put it on top of my cake uh, board here. And I'm going to put my bottom layer of my cake on top of that. That will also help secure it. I will leave a link down below for my favorite vanilla frosting recipe.
I just love how this turned out. I will leave a link down below for the number cake toppers. You can find them in my shop. And also I just used this green eucalyptus greenery from Hobby Lobby and I just put around it. I love how it turned out. And for the cupcakes, I made these cupcake toppers. You can find them in my shop and I'll leave a link down below for them. As for the cupcake, the gold cupcake wrappers, I got those at Hobby Lobby. Okay, moving on to my backdrop. I just set up my photography backdrop stand and I can leave a link down below if you're interested in getting one of those. I used to do photography, so I have some. Also, I am going to be using these lights and I will leave a link down below. I wish I would have got the gold, but I got the silver and it still turned out okay. And I'm going to be using five sheer curtains. Um, these were from Target, but you can pick up some cheap ones from Walmart and probably even Amazon. I'm also going to be using these cheap shower curtain hooks. I got these from Amazon, but I think they sell white at the Dollar Tree. So you can probably get some for a dollar. And I am just sliding those curtains onto my backdrop stand with the help of my daughter. So I took those shower hooks and I put them on my uh, backdrop stand and I put one hook in between each curtain but then I didn't feel like that was going to be enough to hold all the lights so I put a hole in between well in the middle of each actual panel and I put a shower hook in there as well. So here are the lights I'm going to be using and I put the lights on the back side of the curtain and I just took the wire and I just put it, hooked it into those shower hooks. And also I took some bread ties and I made sure to uh, tie the light string to the hook. That way it was snug up there and it didn't fall down. Sorry, I did not to record that for you. Okay, so moving along to the balloon garland and I love these colors. This was a kit that I picked up off of Amazon. It came with 127 pieces. It had gold, a green color, and white, and there were different sizes in there. I actually bought two of these um, packages because I just wanted to make sure that I had enough. And I will leave a link for those down below if you're interested. And also I got this electric balloon pump off of Amazon as well. And it really came in handy and I definitely recommend getting one of these, it will save you so much time. Now for the balloon garland, I just blew up all those balloons with that little pump. And these kits also came with a plastic strip that you would attach the end of your balloons into and some glue dots so you could put the smaller balloons onto the um, arch as well, or the garland. Unfortunately, my memory card that I had of my daughter and I actually putting the balloons onto that strip and actually attaching it to my backdrop is gone. I have no idea where I put it. That is why it has taken me so long to post this video is because I was hoping I would find it, but alas, I have not. So I hope you still enjoyed this video without seeing the garland of us actually putting it on there. But I do have another video from another year where I put the balloons on that plastic strip and attached them. I just attached the balloons onto the garland, well, to the backdrop with, uh, with um, a fishing wire. Well, not wire, it's a fishing line, so some clear fishing line. But you can actually use the white ribbon that comes in this kit. I just felt like the, um, the clear string fishing line actually worked better for us and here is the last clip on this memory card before i had switched it to the one that's gone but here are a lot of the balloons that are blown up and there were quite a bit of balloons and thanks to my husband videoing this on his cell phone to send to my mother-in-law i can show you this <laughs> garland piece of the video and I did pick up this happy birthday banner kit from Party City. I did not use the bottom portion of it with the stars. I just used the happy birthday writing and I really thought it turned out nice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and please give this video a thumbs up and until next time, bye.